Hi, Robin with Oxy Dry. And today I'm doing a very large area here in this basement area. I'm doing these steps. A bit of a hall, hallway over here, bedroom to the left, bedroom to the right. This rather large family room. Another hallway, a bit of a hall, and a bedroom over here. The bedroom over here. Um, this carpet is 14 years old. And it has been cleaned before. It has been steam cleaned at least twice, maybe three times. And uh, the lady called us because um, she was just getting frustrated with the... Uh, just taking too long to dry and that concerned her. And it really alarmed her greatly when the carpet cleaner that she had been getting to clean the carpet told her that your carpet will start to delaminate soon because whenever I clean it, uh, when I get it wet to the backing, which is normal with steam cleaning, the uh, backing the glue binding the primary and the secondary carpet fiber um, layers together will uh, start to weaken and you'll get delamination so that alarmed her and so we actually know her from years ago and uh, so she decided that she's had enough of steam cleaning didn't like the way it was performing didn't like what the carpet cleaner said so she decided to call oxy dry and here i am and um I pre-vacuumed the whole carpet, of course, <clears throat> and overall the carpet actually appears to be in really good shape. Uh, there's only a couple of marks on it that I pre-treated, and um, although there is certainly wear showing, <coughs> pardon me, <clears throat> in the traffic areas a little bit, not bad, it's um, really in actually very good shape for the edge. Uh, when they moved into the house 14 years ago, they had four, they, their kids were all here, and they were, um, I think she said the youngest was in grade seven, I believe she said, and the others were older, and basically young adults, and, um, but since then, they've all moved on, and now there's grandkids coming over. And actually, there's uh, one of her, I don't know if it's her daughter-in-law or her daughter upstairs with a couple of little kids came to visit. And there's also two little doggies in the house, two uh, multi-poodles, multi -poodles, multi poodles. Look like they're about uh, maybe 10 pounds, maybe a bit more. Beautiful little doggies. So, uh, and the uh, house overall is in very good Shape, obviously well cared for, as is the carpet. So this is kind of a easy, easy kind of a job. I will only be requiring to do a single step. I won't be needing the fiber pad. I'm just using an Iron Man right now, and that's all I'm going to use on this carpet because that's all it needs. So it'll go fairly quickly. I'm not going to try to rush it, obviously. Just take my time. Good job, as usual. Pay attention to the details. But as I said, there's I've only seen like I think three or four spots. Nothing, and they weren't even that obvious actually. So it's kind of one of those nice jobs that you run into. I did some furniture upstairs: uh, six dining room chairs, seat and back, and four cushions for a couple of rattan chairs. And so this job is um, nearly $900, so it's a decent sized job, it'll take a few hours here. I expect I'll be out of here by noon, I think, or shortly thereafter. <coughs> so, as you can see how simple and easy it is to do this. For those of you who are rotary users, you know that uh, rotary moves very easily on the carpet. Very little effort. So you don't have to do the push-pull like you would with an OP machine. And of course it goes in any direction easily. Slight lift and it goes right. Push down slightly it goes left. And then I just sort of do a step to move it forward and back. Nice and smooth and quiet.
Now, just to talk a little bit about the the delamination thing that uh, this uh, that uh, oh, there's a sprout right there. Oh, it's just sitting there. <laughs> um, one thing that I learned many many years ago, back when I was doing um, flood work, I used to do that, do that which was very nasty business, I tell you. Um, <laughs> you really see some interesting things when you're doing that work. But anyway, one of the things I learned was that um, when a carpet sits wet, this this type of carpet, broadloom carpet, when they sit wet for longer than six hours, if that backing is saturated with water, which can happen when you steam clean, yes it can, um, the uh, glue begins to break down because the glue is latex based and it dissolves in water. It gets very weak. Um, and that's one of the reasons why you do want to avoid walking on a carpet that's actually wet. When you clean it, it's uh, not good to be walking around on a wet carpet because the backing, which is now made very weak, the glue binding the primary and the secondary backing is so weak that it will, the stepping on it will uh, stress it and uh, it can uh, cause it to separate rather rapidly. So that's one reason why um, a carpet should really not be walked on any more than absolutely necessary when it's actually wet. But when we're cleaning it with the VLM system, low moisture, um, we're not saturating the back of the carpet. The fibers are getting clean, but not the back. The backing doesn't get wet because you're not pushing or driving or pressure washing water into the backing of the carpet. And so the uh, risk of delamination with VLM, with very low moisture method, is basically non-existent. So that's another good reason why VLM is a, a better option in almost every case. This is a nylon carpet. Um, it certainly, <laughs> if it was a polyester, it certainly wouldn't be looking this good after 14 years. Um, and it is a, I guess you call this a plush. It's almost a frise, but not quite a frise style. More of a plush, and it's, it's actually done really well. Even the stairs aren't that badly worn. So, they did choose a good carpet. I, I would I would say this is this is in fact I know it is a um, continuous filament nylon and it'll be a almost certainly be a oh of course it's a stain master which all nylons are I think pretty much now have been for many years actually you know I was actually um, well, I was briefly selling carpet. About six months or so, I worked for a carpet store. <coughs> in 1986, when the Staymaster carpets came out, and uh, I remember there's quite a quite an uproar about it. Carpet cleaners were thinking that the manufacturers had made a carpet that actually wasn't going to get dirty, <laughs> and that was kind of how it was. That was actually how it was kind of marketed, at least initially. You know, get the stain master carpet and you won't have to get the carpet clean kind of as much or ever or whatever it was. You now there was a lot of misinformation about that because that certainly isn't the case. But um, the stain master, the whole thing there was just a marketing ploy. And uh, I guess it worked pretty much. More people were buying carpet because like, well, it's, it's not going to get dirty or the stain and never get stained well it's only actually resistant to acid based stains such as coffee tea wine juice that sort of thing but anyway any of us who actually know what we're doing carpet cleaners we can get any of those stains out of a carpet anyway if we know what we're doing we know what to use so but it was a good marketing uh, position, I guess, and uh, I remember carpet cleaners, I remember, I used, used to belong to a, 
way back then I was, that's where I got my certification was with the uh, Carpet Cleaners Institute of the Northwest. We used to get together, um, I guess monthly, and have a meeting. And I remember, you know, conversations that were going on with different carpet cleaners about this, um, this new stain master carpeting that was coming out and what, what, what did it mean for the industry? So, anyway, <laughs> that's what was going on then. I think when I first started carpet cleaning, there, there's been different what they call generations of nylon fibers. Um, first, second, third, fourth, and I think fifth generation as the stain master, if I remember correctly. But they started off with just a, a simple round filament. Um, and then they went to a scuffed up filament, which was supposed to hide the dirt because they figured that the Brown filament sort of amplified the visual uh, the appearance of soiling, which is why if you do a, a first generation nylon carpet, when you clean it, you get spectacular results from it. <laughs> um, then the next generation was the, um, the one that had the dulled sort of scuffed surface. And then after that, they went to the, I think after that, the third generation was the trilobal, where it had that, Kind of funny shape with again with the idea the idea being that it would uh, hide soil. And uh, it's interesting stuff to I guess to learn about. It's not really relevant anymore because um, I mean they don't make those early generation nylons anymore. They're all fifth generation, I guess. At least. Um, there's even one that has the, um, it's a solution dyed nylon, which means that you can actually even use bleach on it, it won't hurt it. But, um, don't see that very much. In fact, I don't even know if I've ever cleaned one. They're really expensive, as I understand. You can see I'm moving along pretty smartly here scanning all the time looking for any spots with the spot with the uh, floodlight I've got on here uh, stains that might not be visible normally will often show up and that's one reason why I have the light and I do want to see what I'm doing because you, we can certainly get into some areas where there's bad lighting okay let's move this was a spot just ahead of me here that I treated, so I'll be uh, keeping my eyes open for that. It's been around here somewhere. <laughs> seeing it yet. It could be that it's just kind of dissolved away already. Which isn't unusual. There we go. Okay. I keep my spotter. If I can't probably 
can't see that, but it's, I've got a pouch on my, I actually have two pouches on my waist. And on the left side, they've got a couple of uh, carabiners on it, and I can hook the, the um, spotter bottle, the trigger handle there. And by the way, I want to show you guys something. I've shown this before, but I'll show it again. This will save you a lot of grief. See the O-ring? Put an O-ring on your spotter bottles. And when you tighten it down, it'll grip the uh, trigger and it's far less likely to back off because I'm sure if you've been using these for a while, there's been occasions when the top just pop off. You just don't realize it's backed off. So if you put a O-ring there, that'll almost never, it'll almost never come off again. <clears throat> spot right over here, just ahead of me, middle of the hallway. And it's gone. Okay. And uh, here's the, oops, here's the pouch on one side. I got a pouch, can you see that, on the other side? And uh, see the bottle hanging there? That's how I do it. So I'm actually nearly done with this. I've got one more bedroom to do. Coming along rather smartly. <laughs> and after I do this, I will, um, don't have to go in that closet by the way. After I do this, then I will do the steps and then I'll do a post vacuuming, grooming, and then I'll be done. Pretty good. Let's see in what 20 minutes. That's pretty fast. I'm not trying to go fast. <coughs> I learned long ago the secret to being successful in this business isn't a large volume of work that you do, it's doing every job that you do the best you can. It pays off. It just does. I don't have to move any of the beds either, which is nice. I guess the only thing I moved was that chair in there, in the uh, family room. She moved, uh, there's things that were in the bedrooms and she moved them out, out of the way, so that's great. 
Okay, I do see some delamination right over here. Just a little bit. We've got a humidifier running full bore. All, right? We've got a, a big humidifier in our house, and it goes through. It pumps at least between 10 and 15 gallons of water a day into the air. I fill it up usually in the morning and often the often the evening, and sometimes even the morning. That's a lot of water, a lot of air up water being pumped into the air, and the humidity gets up. To, we can get it up to around 40 percent or so, if I keep it on. If I didn't, it would be down probably 25%. And we have, uh, my wife's got a piano and I got guitars. Plus it's not comfortable having it so dry. I had a guitar a few years ago. Um, I was in, didn't have the humidifier and it dried out so much that the uh, the top of it, uh, acoustic guitar, the arch, the arch flattened on the top of it. And acoustically it just sounded awful. Funny story, I sold the guitar, um, I traded it in on a newer, new guitar at the guitar store. A couple of years later I was at a church and there was a guy up there on the pa platform, the pastor actually, he's playing this guitar, it was a Yamaha, it was, it was green, which was unusual, it's a nice, really nice looking guitar. And I was thinking, wow, that sure looks familiar, I know this is a pretty rare guitar. So I went up there afterwards and looked at it and yeah, that was my guitar. It sounded fine with the through the pickup because it had a pickup in it but acoustically it was kind of dead sounding but, it, but with the pickup it sounded fine anyway that was uh, interesting to see that <laughs> all right let's have a look at the pad and as i suspected it wasn't all that bad because the carpet's really overall in good shape so Anyway, I will uh, get set up and do the stairs next. So anyway, I hope that was uh, interesting for you, whoever's watching. And, uh, oh, actually, I'll show you the view from this place here. I'll go over here. So there's the um, Kelowna straight across, and there's the bridge there, the which was replaced, uh, was it 10 or 15 years ago? The Okanagan Bridge. And uh, so we're on what's called West Side or West Kelowna. And uh, yeah, that's uh, where I live. I live actually over on the other side of that mountain over there. You probably couldn't see the area I'm in because of the mountains in the way. But uh, anyway, this is the Okanagan Valley. So I'll let you go and uh, have a good rest of your day.